In this first video for algebraic equations grade 9, we're going to have a look at how you solve equations using inverse operations. An algebraic equation is formed when two expressions are equated to each other. This is then similar to a balanced scale, where the left-hand side's value is exactly the same as that of the right-hand side. When you are asked to solve the equation, it means you need to determine the value of the unknown or the variable in the equation that will ensure that the left-hand side and right-hand side are equal. This will be done using inverse operations. It is also important to remember that because this is a balanced scale, any calculation done on the left should also be done on the right. Let's go and have a look at some examples of what you learned in grade 8. Solve x, example 1. In the first example, we need to get rid of the minus 12 on the left-hand side to solve x. To do this, we'll make use of inverse operations. So, the inverse of minus 12 will be adding 12 on the left-hand side. But, because this is an equation, we will also have to add that same 12 on the right-hand side. In grade 8, you also learned that it is not necessary to show the minus 12 plus 12 on the left-hand side because we know that that will become 0. So, in my next step, I know that x is 20 plus 12, which is 32. In the second example, we now have two operations on the left-hand side. Firstly, we need to get rid of the plus 5 and then also the multiply with 3. I'm reminding you that 3x means 3 times x. So firstly, to get rid of the plus 5 on the left, I'm going to subtract 5 on both sides, but only show it on the right-hand side. So 3x is equal to 12. Now to get rid of the times by 3, I'm going to do the inverse operation of multiplication, which is dividing by 3, and once again, I will divide by 3 on both sides. This means that x will be equal to 4. In example 3, we once again have two operations on the left-hand side. Firstly, there's divided by 4, and then we have the minus 2. So I'm going to start off getting the term with the x, the x over 4 alone, by doing the inverse operation of minus 2, so I will plus 2 on the right. So x divided by 4 is equal to 11. And now I need to get rid of the divided by 4, again by doing the inverse calculation, which is multiplying by 4, and again I do that on both sides. On the left we have 4 divided by 4, which is 1, so that means I am left with x, is equal to 44. In example 4, we now have two terms that contain an x. That means we need to get all those terms with x's on the same side so that we know exactly how many x's we have. You have the option of taking all the x's to the left or all the x's to the right. I'm going to show both methods starting by getting all the x's to the left hand side. Firstly, I'm going to take the plus 7x that's on the right and do the inverse, so minus 7x on the left. And next, I want to get all the constants on the right-hand side. There's already a minus 3 on the right-hand side. And now I also want to get the plus 11 from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. And I do that by subtracting 11. So on the left-hand side, I now have minus 2x is equal to the right of minus 14. And to solve x, I need to get rid of the times by minus 2, which means I will divide by minus 2 on both sides. And now I have x is equal to 7. As I've mentioned, you could also choose to take all the x's to the right-hand side. And this is the method I would prefer here, simply because from the start, we had more x's on the right. So now I want to take the 5x to the right, which means I will subtract 5x. And now I want to get the constants on the left-hand side, where I already have the plus 11. And to get the minus 3 on the left-hand side, 
I will add 3. So now I have 14 is equal to 2x. And again, my final step will be to divide. But this time I will divide by a positive 2. And now I will get the same answer of x is equal to 7. It doesn't matter which way around you write that final answer because the left hand side and right hand sides are off to all equal. If after this quick revision of some grade 8 examples you still feel a bit unsure, you are welcome to follow the link in the description to watch all the grade 8 videos again. In the next video we're going to have a look at what happens if we now also have brackets in our equation.